what's going on YouTube so I'm back with another video I think my most popular video is the remote computer inventory video that I put together I don't know four or five years ago now something like that so I decided to give that thing a refresh uh, the old one uses WMI commandlets that are old use uh, RPC I have refreshed this uh, new mod or new function to use sim commandlets, so it's much quicker, much faster. I think I've added some different inventory stuff to it as well. I didn't compare the two, but it's the same general information. There may be a few differences, but I'm going to basically show you what I have here, how you can edit what what is here, and change it to kind of how you want to change it, how you can add or delete information from uh, what is here to suit it to what you need. So this is the script, get inventory. I think it's the same name as before. I have some help built in here. I give you four examples and I'll show you kind of what those examples do here in a few minutes. Uh, the construction is a little bit different. Here I'm uh, basically creating an array and this is where I determine what I'm going to run uh, the inventory collection on. I'm basically just pinging each machine one time. If it comes back good, I put it in a live computer variable. If not, I just dump it and you'll get a verbose message with the computer name saying it's unreachable. And I'll demonstrate that to you here in a minute. These are all the commandlets that are actually gathering all the information. So here is the live computers variable piping it to for each, and then this is where we're looping through each object. And this is what we're actually doing, all of this stuff. This is kind of the meat and potatoes as far as what's going on with the inventory. You'll see this is the basic format. For instance, for the BIOS properties, these are the properties I'm uh, picking out of this particular commandlet and class, the Win32 BIOS class. And you can see going down here, all of these different classes, it's very similar format. So you can kind of see what's going on. So to create the object, all I'm doing is taking each corresponding property and creating a new object down here with each corresponding pro uh, property. Some of this here you'll see is some formatting based off of what kind of uh, object you get back from the property. I convert it to as a string and you'll see in the uh, the spreadsheet output some of that is based off of it's an object versus a string so I do a little bit of conversion there. So that creates your basic object and really you could have stopped here but for whatever reason PowerShell no matter what order you put these in PowerShell kind of chooses for you what order it puts the each item in the spreadsheet for you. So you can't really control, or I couldn't find a way to control the order in which it put the data in the columns in the spreadsheet. So the only way I could figure out how to do that was create this column order uh, variable, and this is how I do that. However you order these is the order you're going to get them, uh, the columns in the spreadsheet. So in this instance, computer name is going to be the first column, manufacturer is going to be the second, model is going to be the third, et cetera, et cetera. And then here I'm just gathering it all up in the results. And then these are just my examples. So I'll show you what it looks like in Outgrid View. I'm just going to run it on this local host um, virtual machine. And of course, VS Code is going to be funky. So we'll copy paste. So out group you, this is what information you'll get back. Again, I think it's the same basic information I had in the first one. There may be a little bit more uh, junk in here. I tried to take some of what I thought was most relevant information from um, that and combine it with some stuff I've seen at customers and added it in here. One thing I know was not in the first one was uh, this information, the update information. So that's what it looks like in grid view. And these are the examples that you'll see in the help file. So this will give you an idea of what it looks like if you have 
a machine or more than one machine that is not online at the time you run it. So you'll just get this message on the screen. It'll skip that machine and it won't get added to um, the CSV file. So here I'm adding this to just the desktop PC inventory.csv. So we can go look at that. So this is what it looks like. And you can see, because of all this hotfix information, these rows get uh, fairly large. So you can kind of do some formatting and sorting, etc., on all this. So that's just doing it or running it on a comma separated list of computer names. You can also use a text file and I'll show you what this text file looks like. Just a basic list of computer names on each line. Hopefully you can see that. So this is everything on my domain. I have some server 2012 boxes in here, so you can imagine the uh, hotfix list is fairly long for those particular boxes. So, the hotfix uh, row will be especially large for those machines. I think these are the two that are. Yeah, you can see that's. but it captures all the information. Then you can conceivably throw all this all in a, throw this data in a uh, database or Power BI dashboard or something like that. I have included this because it was the most, probably the question I got asked most about the first inventory script. Can I just get all my computers from a domain and run this script on everything in my domain? Well, yeah, you can, but be careful doing that. Obviously, if you have a large domain, an enterprise with thousands or hundreds of thousands of machines, you know, you may bring it to a screeching halt if you run this command on your domain, say, you know, during regular business hours or whatever. So use at your own risk. I would not run this on a production domain. But it does work. It will pull everything out of Active Directory that is a computer object. Did it finish? Yeah, it's thinking. Even on a small domain, it's going to take a, a, long, or a while longer than like a CSV file or a, a text file. So that's everything in my domain. What you may be better, uh, better off doing is paring it down to a specific OU. So this command will search in a specific OU. In my case, this is my domain, and then I'm only searching in the server's OU. So that would, if I'm using this in a domain and I'm not using a CSV or a text file or a comma separated list of computers, I would probably use uh, the OU method. That would be my recommendation. All right, what else is I going to go over? Um, changing the column headers. So let's say I want to reorder things. For whatever reason, you needed to, your report wanted to look different, and I'll just move one around here just for demonstration purposes. So just say I wanted to move the computer name to the second column versus the first. 
it's literally that simple. Now, just understand you're going to have to uh, load the function back into memory. Before you're going to see any of those changes if you're in uh, the commands again. So if I run outgrid view again, now you can see the computer name is the second call versus the first. So that was pretty simple. Um, what else did I want to change? What if I want to change a header name? So let's say I want to change computer name to PC name. You're going to have to make that in two places. So change it down here in column order. So change that to PC name. And then go up here under my object and change it here to PC name save it and then I'm gonna to have to do the same thing again copy it all back into memory or run it all back into memory And there you see the column name changed to PC name. So fairly simple as far as updates. Um, what else was I going to do? So I'll show you how to take something out of here and you can just do the vice versa to add something if you wanted to add something. So to take a property out, so if I wanted to remove, say, this domain registration enabled property from the network adapter. Uh, first, easiest way to do this is find it here, find it down there. So what I want to do is just get rid of it here. I want to get rid of this line. And you could just comment this out if you wanted to. Notice that was DNS registration. So I'm going to have to go down here and also get rid of DNS registration. Save. Now, if I didn't screw up any of the syntax, that should work. And then if you wanted to add a property, just do the exact opposite. Add your property in the, uh, do whatever commandlet, add it to your object, add it to the column order, and you're pretty much good to go. DNS registration was... Right in here somewhere, adapter info. It was right after adapter info. Yep, it's gone now. So that's pretty much it. I think that's all I wanted to cover on this inventory. Um, if you can think of anything else that you would want to add, I tried to keep this 
Well, I did keep it. I wanted to use only sim commandlets just to enable some backward compatibility and not have any other dependencies on any other modules or anything. So that's why you only see sim instance. You don't see any other uh, PowerShell commandlets used here to gather any of this information. All we're using is the WMI classes using git sim instance. So if you can find, if you can think of any other information that you would want to add to this, shoot me a message uh, on the website or leave a comment in the below the video or shoot me a message on Twitter. I think the next thing I probably want to do with this is see if I could add this to a database or maybe a Power BI dashboard to to take this information and you know kind of make better use of it as far as reports go. So if you have any ideas around that, you know, let me know about those too. Thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate your support. Do all those likes, shares, you know, those things. And I'll see you on the next video.